and this is following the dragon's attack on the woman, there was war in heaven or in the spiritual world. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Look at that. Like Yehu initiating the cleansing in Israel, Michael will initiate this war to cleanse the spiritual world. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, which tells us they will fight back, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven or in the spiritual world. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, or in other words, that serpent of old. Where do we see a serpent at the dawn of mankind's existence? In the Garden of Eden. Ah, oh. so if anybody's wondering now, that serpent that appeared in the tree that deceived Eve, it wasn't a serpent. It was Lucifer appearing in the form of a serpent. Ah, so the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. So this is from the spiritual world to the physical world. And his angels, which are corrupt principalities and powers, were cast out with him. Ah. So now, contrary to traditional church teaching, Lucifer and the one-third deceived angels did not and will not attack God. In fact, these angels are not even angels. They're much higher ranking principalities and powers. And they were not deceived. They were just as corrupt. Or they are not deceived. Let's put it that way. Because they're still in the spiritual world where they were assigned doing what God assigned them to do until such a day comes that they will be thrown out. Mm. Paul identifies these spiritual rebels, because I said they're not angels. He identifies them in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, as principalities and powers. And they're not fallen angels, and they're not demons. These principalities and powers are a higher class of spirit beings. Again, they are currently engaging in spiritual wickedness from their positions of authority in the spiritual world. Spiritual wickedness, that's the Greek word poneria, and it means corrupt actions, refusal to be governed by any law, and a desire to cause pain, injury, or distress. This is the corruption that they influence in the physical world. God is aware of them, and he will cast them out with Lucifer at the, the ordained time. They, these principalities and powers, they correspond to the important ministers in Ahab's administration who supported his corruption, and Yehu cut them down. In addition, you know, while we're on the topic, nowhere does scripture indicate that Lucifer was the worship leader in heaven. Scripture does not say that. On the contrary, Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 16 through 19 reveals that Lucifer was a covering cherub. And a cherub is a guardian. And it alludes, Ezekiel chapter 28 alludes to Lucifer originally rebelling against God alone. At that time, Lucifer was not thrown out of the spiritual world to the physical world. He was stripped of his authority as covering cherub. Now, some people may wonder, okay, well, what's a covering cherub? 
If you look on the Ark of the Covenant, there's the mercy seat, which is invisible. It's, it's supposed to be there, but they didn't put it there. It, it, it's, it's there. Amen. And covering the mercy seat, because that's what God sits on, covering the mercy seat are two winged cherubims with their wings, each facing each other, covering the mercy seat. This shows us that cherubim or cherub are guardians. They guard God's immediate presence from all sin and corruption. That's what they do. This is the reason why after God told Adam and Eve to leave the Garden of Eden, he placed a cherub with, or maybe it might have been more than one, but he placed a cherub with flaming swords to guard the entrance of the Garden of Eden, lest Adam and Eve go back into the garden and eat from the tree of life and live forever in their fallen condition, forever alienated from God. Cherub, cherubim, are guardians. They surround God's throne and they pretty much do whatever he tells them to do. But that's what their function is. And Lucifer, as a covering cherub, was just that. He wasn't any worship leader leading the heavenly choir in the spiritual world. That is a misunderstanding of the words that Ezekiel used. Tabrets, thy tabrets and thy pipes were formed in thee the day that they were formed. Here's a newsflash. Tabrets, although it may sound like tambourine, tabrets are a jeweler's term. A tabret is the hole that the jeweler drills into whatever he's making and then takes the foundation and places it into the hole. And on that foundation, that's the setting that you then place a jewel on. That's what a tabret is. It's the hole that holds the setting or the foundation for the jewel. That's what that is. So what Ezekiel was talking about with the tabrets is talking about the jewels that were built into Lucifer, which identifies the high role of authority that he had. You know, I guess we could, if we were to give it an analogy, it would be like the uh, pins on a general's chest. You know, or maybe the stars on his shoulder that indicate who he is and his ranking. We can kind of compare it to that. In addition.